New at 10, it's a federally funded program geared at cleaning up the Great Lakes. While the fight for funding continues to keep our lakes great, the Great Lakes hold an estimated 95% of the nation's surface fresh water. In the heart of North America, a silent transformation is unfolding beneath the glassy expanse of the Great Lakes. From Duluth to Detroit, Thunder Bay to Sheboygan, this vast freshwater frontier has always guarded its mysteries, some lost in the depths, others quietly shaping the lives of tens of millions. But in 2025, a series of unexpected events and high-stakes developments have begun to upend old assumptions about the Midwest and its mighty waters. Scientists are increasingly befuddled by unusual water level patterns, with unseasonably cold nights and shifting outflows becoming headline news. The Great Lakes region has been called a climate refuge, protected by cooler temperatures and sitting high above sea levels. Political fault lines now run through the region, putting the world's largest freshwater ecosystem on a knife's edge. Tech leaders, environmental advocates, and resource industries are all seeking to secure their place and stake their claim in the future of the lakes. The lake. When you live along a Great Lake named Superior, you never forget who has the upper hand. Off the shoreline of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, the shipwreck Sentinel buoy quietly monitors the waves, one of a network of advanced data collectors now spread across the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes. We know there are five of them and that they're the largest freshwater system in the world. Meanwhile, plans for billion-dollar data centers and pioneering water tech startups bring both hope and unease to reviving industrial cities. The stakes have never been higher for ecology, energy, water, and regional power. Just how much has changed beneath the Great Lakes? What forces are shaping this monumental transformation? And are we ready to face what emerges from the depths? As 2025 unfolds, one thing is certain. The future of the Midwest is being rewritten in water. Unraveling water's new mysteries. Look to a Great Lakes forecast today, and it's clear. Water levels that once followed an almost seasonal rhythm now fluctuate with unfamiliar uncertainty. Historically, Lake Michigan and Lake Huron have moved together, their interconnected waters rising and falling in echo. In 2025, however, scientists were left puzzled as those familiar patterns broke down. Drought descended with an unexpected harshness, slowing rivers and desiccating landscapes from Wisconsin to Ontario. Unseasonably cold nights sent temperatures dipping, while local farmers and shippers were forced to abandon the old rhythms of spring rains and warm breezy Julys. Where reliable cycles once defined life along the shore, unpredictability has now become the rule. Michigan-Huron, the massive two-lake system together larger than many countries, showed the sharpest single-year decline in water levels seen in decades. Port towns, once filled with freighters and bustling docks now faced newly revealed sandbars and dry mud flats. Barges sat idle on shallow channels, and waterfront property owners watched as their shorelines receded. Experts, searching for explanations, turned their eyes underwater. In 2024, Great Lakes ice cover reached a maximum of only 16%, far below normal for recent decades. Winter's frozen shield once vital for limiting evaporation and safeguarding shorelines, had all but vanished. With little or no ice cover, every gust of wind or warm spell in 2025 stressed these vast water bodies even more, accelerating the lake's seasonal losses. Why this volatility now? Models and data pointed to both shifting outflows and large-scale atmospheric changes, with drought and unseasonably cold periods mingling in confusing patterns across the region. But the greatest uncertainties lurked below, within the bedrock, in currents, and hidden in the slow flow of groundwater. Growing signs suggest that the interplay of physical, climatic, and human factors 
is driving a new age of unpredictability for the lakes. The race for water tech supremacy. As uncertainty threatened the Midwest's water security, an innovation race commenced, centered not on metal, but on data and water itself. Visionaries across the region asked, why not make the Great Lakes the Silicon Valley for water technology? Across Chicago's skyline and Thunder Bay's harbors, startups and multinationals alike shifted gears to focus on the water economy's digital future. Data buoys, including the shipwreck Sentinel, became crucial, gathering millions of data points on winds, waves, and chemistry. Talks of smart lakes gained momentum, where artificial intelligence could predict algal blooms, spot pollution, and optimize shipping. Water itself, measured in untold trillions of gallons, was reimagined as a strategic asset. In boardrooms overlooking foggy harbors, developers pitched ideas that would have been unthinkable a decade ago. Gigawatt-scale data centers cooled by lake water, leveraging the natural resource as a draw for tech sector investment. In hard-hit corners of Michigan, a $3 billion data center proposal brought cautious optimism, as well as concerns about environmental cost. Environmentalists and local communities issued warnings about water withdrawals, pollution risks, and pressure on outdated infrastructure. Would tech-driven growth repeat past industrial mistakes or spark sustainable renewal? Some saw opportunity, while others saw warning signs, echoes of hard lessons learned during previous eras of exploitation. Meanwhile, debates over international data access and technology sharing complicated progress. Tensions between U.S. and Canadian research entities hindered some collaborations, slowing effective response and innovation. The central question loomed, who controls the new water economy and who benefits most? Tracking the shipwreck sentinels. Nowhere is the meeting of past and present more visible than in the new breed of research boys. The shipwreck sentinel, brightly colored and solar powered, takes its name from the many vessels still hidden beneath Lake Michigan's waves, proof of the lake's deep and murky history. Unlike the resting shipwrecks, these sentinel buoys are busy transmitting streams of data in real time to researchers across the region. They track everything from wind speed and surface temperature to currents, wave heights, and water chemistry. Sonar scans probe for changes on the bottom, and analysts sit in glass-walled labs, watching for the slightest changes in pattern. In 2025, the shipwreck Sentinel and other buoys picked up irregular turbulence where currents once ran predictably, a finding closely correlated with abrupt changes in temperature and sharp drops in water level. Data from around Green Bay confirmed the anomaly, prompting teams to study whether these disturbances represented legacy effects from glacial geology, human activity, or ongoing climatic adjustment. While some speculated about newly opened aquifers or subtle adjustments in subsurface geology, most researchers emphasize the profound impact of low ice cover, coupled with shifting climate patterns, as the main driver. Regardless, the region's buoy network emerged as a vital early warning system, tracking signals that would otherwise remain hidden. Communities watching these developments face the reality that even the most advanced prediction networks sometimes only confirm what's already happening on the ground. Responding to these signals with agility is quickly becoming as important as collecting the data itself. Ecological fault line and political earthquakes. Even while technology probes the lake's mysteries, political battles heat up, threatening cooperation on both sides of the border. The U.S. and Canada, sharing the world's largest freshwater ecosystem, have seen tensions mount as regions debate how best to protect and allocate these waters for future generations. Foremost among the flashpoints is the Line 5 pipeline. Snaking under the Straits of Mackinac, this aging infrastructure has already leaked more than a million gallons of oil since its construction. As concern over its safety mounts, activists, tribal leaders, and policymakers have called for urgent action, while some Canadian leaders 
cite economic reliance and cross-border agreements to defend its continued operation. Negotiations and disputes over pipeline safety, water withdrawals, and industrial developments play out in courtrooms and council chambers. At every turn, decisions about the lakes have become entangled in broader questions about sovereignty, economic dependency, and environmental justice. Local leaders worry that national interests sometimes overshadow local needs, while both sides blame each other for failing to prioritize ecosystem health. These rifts are particularly acute where stewardship models and regulatory frameworks clash, slowing action at a moment when rapid adaptation is needed most. Across the Great Lakes Basin, the intertwined fates of water, economy, and identity have never felt more precarious. A climate on edge, weather gone wild. Throughout all these developments, the capriciousness of climate has remained inescapable. In 2025, the Great Lakes region experienced persistent drought, worsening over months and extending across large stretches of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Ontario. Rivers ran low and lake shores were stripped bare, revealing rocks and mud flats unseen in years. Yet, meteorological models indicated a possible reversal with the precipitation outlook trending well above average for the Great Lakes area after a prolonged dry period. Such rapid swings between scarcity and abundance have made long-standing notions of normal weather near meaningless. Farmers delay planting unsure if rain or drought will dominate, and cities prepare for both water shortages and sudden downpours. Sharp drops in water levels across Michigan-Huron especially sent waves of anxiety through lakeside communities dependent on stability for shipping, recreation, and property values. The near record low ice cover from the previous winter left the lakes exposed to more evaporation and shoreline erosion, heightening vulnerability to both natural and human stressors. Such volatility forces a reckoning. Are these shifts signs of a new normal or just part of the lake's long history of flux? industrial gambles and environmental reckonings. For struggling cities along the lakes, the promise of water-cooled data centers and technology hubs represents a potentially transformative opportunity. In some corners of Michigan, where poverty, blighted industry, and infrastructure decay have been chronic challenges, this debate goes to the core of the challenge facing the basin, how to balance technological and economic vitality with sustainable stewardship. The outcome will set a precedent for cities across North America considering similar pivots. The Watchers of Thunder Bay. North of the border, Thunder Bay has become a symbol of reinvention. At the edge of Lake Superior, leaders there are charting a path to create a world-class hub for water management and research a vision rooted in both economic ambition and long-standing stewardship values. Thunder Bay's approach draws on rich maritime heritage while leveraging technology and indigenous knowledge. Partnerships with First Nations leaders, scientists, and industry are fostering solutions for water treatment, pollution monitoring, and fisheries management. The goal, transform the city into a proving ground for sustainable water innovation that can serve as a model for the entire basin. Educational programs blend traditional ecological principles with modern science, seeking to ensure that future generations understand both the utility and sacredness of this resource. Water laboratories experiment with filtration, mapping, and AI, while ensuring that decision-making remains inclusive, integrating both indigenous perspectives and commercial innovation. Thunder Bay's outcomes could influence debates throughout the Great Lakes. Can economic revival and responsible environmental management coexist? Their successes and challenges are sure to inform how other cities pursue resilience in the face of mounting pressures. Currents of Controversy, Line 5, and the Battle for the Basin. If one issue embodies the urgent crossroads facing the Great Lakes in 2025. It's the fate of the Line 5 pipeline. For decades, Line 5 has moved oil through the Straits of Mackinac, 
raising alarm among environmentalists who point to its million-gallon spill record and the unique ecological vulnerability of this watery corridor. Ongoing lawsuits, protests, and policy battles have underscored the dilemma, how to balance energy needs and economic interests against the extraordinary risk a rupture would pose to drinking water, fisheries, and local economies. Many indigenous groups assert their stewardship rights, pressing for removal and remediation, while industry representatives and policymakers point to ongoing dependencies. Each side invokes science and morality, but the outcome remains unclear. The battle over Line 5 is not just about a pipeline, but stands as a symbol for the larger test. Can the region protect its watershed for future generations, or will the drive for economic continuity outweigh the lessons of past disasters? Rising to the challenge, a new era dawns. With 2025 well underway, the Great Lakes are revealing themselves not as static backdrops, but as active players in shaping the identity and prospects of the Midwest. From climate oscillations to political confrontation, from technological leaps to environmental risk, the lakes stand at the center of chain. Every new anomaly or challenge sends ripples through towns, boardrooms, and research labs alike. The idea that these waters will always be abundant is fading in light of volatile data and lived experience. Vigilance, collaboration, and innovation are now required simply to keep pace. Whether you see the turbulence as foreboding or as the pressure needed to bring positive transformation, one fact is undeniable. The destiny of millions now hinges on a healthy, resilient Great Lakes system. So, what just happened beneath the waters? The answers lie in the interplay of drama and data, conflict and creativity, memory and new vision. How this moment in the basin's history is remembered will depend on whether we respond with urgency and imagination or let crises define us. Which revelation changed your perspective on the Great Lakes? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If this look at the hidden tides and turning points of the Midwest brought up new questions, leave a like and share your voice. Subscribe and stay tuned because every ripple from beneath the surface tells a story worth hearing. Until next time, keep your curiosity high and your focus sharp. The waters of the Great Lakes hold both wonders and warnings for us all.